The greatest power you possess is your ability to choose. Join Lowe's more as he reveals how you can begin to maximize that power by exploring yourself on the deepest levels and committing to making lasting and positive changes. Get ready to achieve breakthroughs that will lead to accelerated growth and transformation because you are now tuned in to The Blueprint. Good evening and welcome back to The Blueprint Podcast. Man, I, I hope you guys are making an adjustment, man. It got a little bit cold outside. A last couple of days, I was walking around. Hey, I went for a walk today, man. It's kind of freezing out there, man. Weather's changing a little bit. And check this out. My wife says she's going up to Albany. I, I guess tomorrow morning she's driving up to Albany, but they're supposed to get some snow tomorrow, and we're supposed to be getting some snow down here. I don't know how much, but that means, hey, all I can say is I'm not worried about the snow. It's Christmas time, man. It's man. Look, we're we in the joyous season, right? And I want to say this real quickly because what comes with this this season, man, is a season of joy, but also a you know, you know, a season of some, you know, some people are grieving because you know they lost loved ones, whether it's through the pandemic or even not the not the pandemic, man, things have just changed. I even said, man, I, it felt a little weird, man, because I and my family, you know, my mom, my mom's still here. Right. And, but it, it seems a little weird because I'm becoming the matriarch of my family. Now that's weird. <laughs> you know, we, we were at my grandmother's. I, I could just remember like it was yesterday. I was at my grandmother's, right. We had celebrating Christmas at my grandmother's. And then next thing you know, we sell them Christmas at my, with my mom, right? And my mother and father-in-law and my mother and father-in-law is no longer here, you know, so we no longer celebrate. Man, it's just weird, right? And you realize that you're getting a little bit older, right? And you just slowly taking their places. And it's kind of a good thing, you know, that you could live to this time and be able to enjoy your grandkids, man. I'm speaking it into existence, man. I'm having grandkids, man. I'm having great grandkids. I'm looking at my mom. She got great grandkids and she's still here. I'm going to be like her when I grow up. That's, that, that's, that's, that's the, that's my word, man. I'm, I won't be like her, but anyway, uh, again, welcome back. And on a note of sad, sad news, um, you know, many of you know, I played, played in the NBA and we lost uh you know my a great player and and a former coach of mine uh Paul Salas man nobody was nicer than Paul man i mean he was the nicest coach <laughs> i ever had you know uh playing with the uh, San Diego Clippers man we had Bill Walton Terry Cummins Craig Hodges Michael Brooks man we man we had woo, Randy Smith Ooh, we had a good team, man. We just wasn't very good. I mean, you know, <laughs> plays weren't that good. But Paul was the best, man. I mean, just amazing. His son is now coaching the uh, Houston Rockets. Um, Paul left, you know, a lot of assistant coaches, Nets, Knicks, and then went down to Charlotte, was the head coach. Um, man, this guy was 6'5". Well, well, I say he's about 6'7", about 6'8". And one of the greatest rebounders of a from a person who had maybe like a 15 inch vertical jump. I mean, he he had no jumping ability, man. He couldn't get off the ground, but he knew how to use that body, man. He's he was a legend in in playing defense and getting those rebounds and getting that ball out, man. Man, Paul, man, you you're gonna be sorely missed, man. I mean, really, really, truly missed, man. What a good friend, man. What a loving a loving person, man. You're gonna. And I just want to say, man, my condolences and and uh, rest in peace, man. Yeah. So let, let's let's get going. I'm I'm gonna drop. Wait, where's uh oh? Here's my pebble. Well, you know it's my mini ball, right? But it's my pebble. I'm dropping in the pond. I just dropped my pebble in the pond. I'm expecting a ripple effect, right? When you drop a pebble in the pond, you get a ripple effect, right? Somebody's gonna be impacted by by tonight's show tonight. Right. And then somebody somewhere down the road 
will will see the show and later on it, it, something will pop in their mind that they heard or seen and and then somebody's going to look at this man uh, you know a couple of weeks from now a couple of months from now and and they're going to get they're going to get a they're going to get something from this as well so uh you know I, let me let me show this real quick cuz this is our series of paying it forward right so i want to show this quick uh little video of paying it forward and and then I'm gonna show a quick highlight, you know, for my guest tonight. And I'm gonna have him. I'm gonna include him in in the in the intro of the show tonight. And so let's 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 show this uh this um paying it forward. I was just looking for my phone. Yeah, there you go. God bless right, you. Thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Yes. Yeah, Thank you, man. Wow. I like that, man. I, I was watching that, man, during the week, man. You know, I got all my tears out earlier uh, during the week, <laughs> during the week, so I wouldn't cry tonight. Uh, but man, when I see people paying it forward like that, man, I just get blessed in my heart, man. And and there's so many people out there paying it forward. We just assume because the world seems so bleak right now uh, that that nobody's paying it forward, but that's not true. There are thousands, millions of people who are paying it forward, and I, man, and it's my pleasure to be able to show a little bit of it. Um, you know every week and and you know let me let me show this video because uh my guest tonight um has definitely paid it forward and i'm looking forward to this conversation tonight how long have you guys been coming to gibbs bay since i was six since i was eight since i was nine this program has break practically changed my life like she said it just changed my life completely I want to become a neurologist. I want to be a future lawyer. Pretty much after I, after I do that, I'll become a president when I'm like 35. I've done so many things. Uh, there's the swimming classes, basketball, and Torch Club, especially the Torch Club, my favorite. If I weren't here right now, I'd probably be doing the same thing I did before, school home, school home. I keep telling them, go to Kids Bay instead of just going home and doing nothing. Kiss Bay Boys and Girls Club. I want to welcome to the show my main man, Dan Contrero. Yeah. What's up, Danny? Thank you, Lowe's. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction, man. It's such an honor to be here. It's an honor to be with you. And uh, man, time goes by so fast, huh? I could I could recall, <laughs> wow, th probably 30, 30 years ago when I met you, um, that we had so much to accomplish and so much to talk about. And, and, and so many people to impact, right? And, and and I think I think we both have, thank God. And uh, there's still so much more to do. So yeah. I'm so happy to be on this podcast with you. Uh, it, it, it's an honor to be here, and I'm looking forward to kind of chopping it up this this evening with you. And like you said earlier, hopefully hopefully anything we say will will have a, a great impact on on individuals that are listening and 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 taking this in yeah now watching that video i'm sure there's a, it may be i don't know if it's a recent or old how old are those you you remember those young young people well it's, it's funny because I, I i i actually recognized the, the young man and and i think he just graduated college recently Woo! i knew it i knew it i was like i'm gonna put this up man because you know we see a video of somebody or a picture of somebody and somebody said man you know, we show it in the little magazine, stuff like that. And you, then you'll say like, hey, man, that guy's like 29 years old right yeah, now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that, that has to be, uh, I think, 12, 13, 12 to 14 years old. And um, I mean, look, you, you know, the club has been around now. Kips Bay has been around for about 106 years now. And 
Uh, I've been fortunate enough to be the executive director of the last 26. Uh, I just made 26 years, uh, December 6th. And it's it's been an honor, a pleasure, and uh, not a day goes by that I don't thank the good Lord for putting me there because uh, that definitely was orchestrated by him. Oh, yeah. I, I, I mean, I was on my way, right? Mm -hmm. uh, my wife will tell you, I was in Albany, New York, just finished playing, um, you know, my pro career, uh -huh. uh, doing a little coaching. And my wife and I were planning on moving to North Carolina, to Charlotte. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and then I get a call from one of my mentors, my coach, my father figure, Mr. James Jones, called me and said, hey, man, they need an executive director of the Boys and Girls Club. Would you be interested in doing it? And at the time, he was the unit director. Right. So I was on my way to North Carolina. I don't know what I was going to do, but I was on my way there. Uh, and and by like by design. Right. By design, uh, God. Made a shift. And and next thing you know, I was at the Boys and Girls Club, uh, you know, a place I truly loved and uh, just powerful. Yeah. So, well, uh, as they say, I, I'm thankful that sometimes we plan, but. The good Lord has better plans for her. <laughs> yeah. And then it said, yeah, we playing. He laughs. <laughs> exactly. exactly yeah. Yeah. Oh man. But, but check this out. Let, let, I'm going to give I'm going to give a book of the week, right? Mm -hmm. Let me show you this book of the week. And then I want to hear about your favorite book. Um, huh, okay. And this is Leslie Odoms Jr. Uh, failing up. Right. Uh, I'm my son gave me this book. Right. And I am in the process of reading it. I just he gave it to me a little while ago. And I've been I, I've been going through a series of books on the show every every week. I give I give another book. And uh, so I'm about to start this book. So mm -hmm. if anybody out there that's looking for a book to read, uh, check this one out, man. Leslie Odom's failing up. Right. right. Uh, so and, and so then what, what, what do you got, man? What What's your favorite book? It, you know, I, you know, I, I grown up, I grew up at Kipps Bay and I, I was a gym rat growing up at the club. And uh, I've been involved in and I've been interested in sports and the sports world uh, most of my life. Um, so I've read a lot of sports books, a lot of sports stories, uh, a lot of uh, uh, legacy type things as it relates to the Yankees, the Brooklyn Dodgers and and. And 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 our beloved New York Knicks, but, <laughs> but I think I think the most one of the most impactful books that I've ever read was a book by uh, Bob Bob Buford. Uh, it's called Halftime. Mm. And and Bob, you know, Mr. Buford, he 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 suffered some some setbacks in his life. He actually lost his son, but. Um, he talks very eloquently about how you go uh, from success in your in, in the first half of your life, and you go from success to significance. Mm. And it's interesting because I th I feel that for the last five, seven, eight years, that's how I've been I've been kind of evolving into that. Um, and and I think after reading that book, it it kind of redirected my priorities it redirected uh how i thought about uh your professional life as it and in comparison to your personal and family life uh how to prioritize that a lot better mm -hmm. um and also you know what is god's calling on our lives you know we you know we call it professional or profession or we call it you know uh, our job but really you know and I, I feel strongly about the fact that, you know, the fact that I've been in Boys and Girls Club for about 39 years has to be God's calling on my life, man, because um, I didn't go to school for this stuff. I didn't go to school to learn how to raise <laughs> money. I didn't go to school to, 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 to interact and manage people and, and try to uh, uh, galvanize them and, and motivate them so that they impact the lives of children or or the administrative piece uh, elevates to the point where we're running efficiently and we can do more, more special events and impact more lives that way. So th there was no concentration in college for that. Um, mm -hmm. 
and as you I, as you well know, I, I played professional baseball. Uh, uh, coming out coming out of college, I played professional baseball, and when that didn't work out, I I ended up at a boys and girls club, and I I, I didn't end up at Kips Bay. I ended up at, at at another boys and girls club because I knew at Kips Bay I, they would they would give me a job, and I didn't want a handout. I wanted I wanted to achieve a job, and. I, and call it pride or, or, or just foolishness on my part. But I, I did apply at the Madison Square Boys and Girls Club and I, I was able to get a job there. And I was there for 10 years. And while I was there as a phys ed director and then a unit director, you know, I just started attaining all these, all these uh, skills as it related to the operation and the development and the uh, the fundraising within a, a boys and girls club structure, um, which kind of empowered me to go on and work with uh, boys and girls clubs of America, which is when I met you, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and I was able to help not only folks like you but folks all over the Northeast region, just with sharing my intellectual capital and what I had to offer and what I, I had been able to attain over that t that f those first ten or twelve years. Again, I didn't learn it in school. I learned it, you know, by doing. I learned it. I learned it through experience. I learned it uh, through a lot of hard knocks, working at, at a at a real difficult club in a real difficult neighborhood. Um, but you know, I was able to cut my teeth there and, and really uh, empower myself to move on in this industry and this profession. Um, and I'm, you know. And, and, and it, it kind of also gave me an idea of what things are important as it relates to moving through your career. And, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to minimize education because education is always important and, mm -hmm. and getting a standard, good, solid academic, you know, is important. But I also feel you don't have to go to Harvard or Yale to, to do that. <laughs> uh, yeah. and, and I was able to, to, get that real foundational kind of educational piece that really uh, prepared me for that initial job after professional sports. Mm. And then in that initial job, I was able to attain a lot of skills to move on to the national level and then really lead a major organization, which I've been at for 26 years. So I know, yeah. I, I know I'm kind of filibustering here, but that, that that that's that's kind of that that was kind of my my road to to where I'm at now. Yeah, and 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 like a lot, I'm sorry, Rose, and a lot of it had to do with uh, as I as I came got through that journey, and I I must have read I must have read halftime probably probably <laughs> about, 10, 15, about fifteen years ago now. Yeah, you and see that up there now. Heard, yeah, that's it. Yeah, Bob Buford. Wow. <laughs> and um, the, it's an amazing book if you want to really uh, think about, yeah, uh, you've been successful, but now what? Mm. What's the purpose? How do you, as you said, how do you pay it forward? How are you going to impact the people around you and, and, and your community uh, continually? So uh, I think reading, reading this book, uh, really set me on that path, you know. And mm -hmm. also, and also from a spiritual standpoint, it, it, it taught me to stay still. And and it talks about listening to God's still small small voice, you know. Right. And, and really, those whispers, you know. It, I I think people that are not of faith base may listen to somebody something like this and say, "Man, Dan Quintero's crazy, man. What the hell is he doing?" Listening. <laughs> But it's not even when I talk about a still small voice, I talk about a feeling. I talk about a heart thing. I talk about a welling up in someone's spirit about an issue or an initiative or, mm -hmm. or, or a decision you have to make. And I, I feel that's how that's how God works. And, and I have so many examples of that in my life. And I'm so grateful for that. So, uh, yeah, Bob, I know I'm talking a lot, but yeah. halftime, Bob Buford, I recommend it highly, especially if you're like 40, 45. Uh, you know, halftime is not when the game ends, right? It's, it's, <laughs> not, it's, it's just, it's just halftime. Yeah, it's just halftime. <laughs> you, you got, you got a couple endings. You got to finish. You, know, you got the seventh inning. You know, seventh. <laughs> you know, 
He's got some more innings. That's and, right. uh, you know, right. football, you got some halftime, hockey, yeah. uh, you know, basketball. But I, always, uh, I tell my kids, listen, I got a few I got a few miles left on my odometer. Right. Oh, so yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, hey, when you get over a certain age, you start talking like that. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You start looking forward. But yeah. um, I want to say thank you to you and um, Roxanne uh, Spillett, because uh, when I first started with the Boys and Girls Club, you guys came down um, from from the national uh, to be a support to me. Uh, mm -hmm. and it was very much needed. Uh, like you said, I didn't, I did not go to school for it. <laughs> uh, you, you know, I did not go to school for it. You know, I was thrust into this, uh, in, into this position because of my love for the city of Mount Vernon, my love for the boys and girls club. And I wanted to see the club, uh, back to the level that, that I experienced as a kid, that was the whole goal and to surpass it you know, to surpass uh, my experience and give the kids, you know, that were coming up at that time, you know, just a more powerful, a more powerful experience. And you guys were instrumental in that. And also I got a picture, I think of Mr. Jim Swab, mm. right? I think I got a picture of him. Um, and me and Jimmy, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and you know, the crazy thing was, you know, cause Jim was before you, that's right. And, and, and when I became the executive director for the boys and girls club, uh, he gave me a call. I don't know if you knew this or not, but he gave me a call and I, you know, he said, look, I know this is your first time being an executive director. I want, I want to help you make a a, a strong transition. And for my first three to six months, I met with uh, Jim every Monday for two to three hours. And he used to come visit me. And then I come visit at, at mm -hmm. Kips Bay. And we used to talk about budgets, mm -hmm. you know, percentages, what percent, you know, as an executive director, you break yourself down into percentages, mm -hmm. prioritize those, 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 uh, those percentages. And, right. and and identify what comes first. And so yeah. so you guys are very instrumental in, in my growth as an executive director. Um, and so I'm, I'm truly thankful for that. Well, that's great. And, and, and Jim is uh, Jim is doing well. He lives in Red Hook, New York. I still stay in touch with him. As a matter of fact, I just got a Christmas card from him. Uh, it, it's actually right behind me. I haven't even read it yet, <laughs> but he sent me a Christmas card. And, um, you know, Jim, that picture there where we're in the yellow t-shirts he was 77 there at the time it was right before the pandemic mm. and uh we ran uh we ran a three a 3k uh no a 5k a 5k, 5K. Race. You, you said you ran it <laughs> yeah, no we didn't run it we didn't run it I'm not... <laughs> you got you had to call me out on that huh <laughs> No, but, I just uh, want to know. He was 77. He was running it. I, I should have like, said, said, we finished it. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. that was us crossing the finish line. And, and the other the other picture was at Kips Bay's uh, 50th anniversary in the Bronx. We've been around for 106 years, but we've been in the Bronx now. That was in, 20, 20, in 2015 that made 50 years in the Bronx. Mm. I'm not saying. My math may be a little off, but that was the 50th anniversary, and uh, he was nice enough to come, uh, and we we celebrated it at Yankee Stadium. The Yankees were very supportive in that. And uh, Jim is 80 plus years old now and doing pretty well. He's actually a substitute teacher in high school, if you can believe that. So the, kid, the kids are the kids are listening to him. He's putting them in headlocks still. <laughs> he, he's doing really well. Um, and, you know, Jim is an ex-Marine. Um, he's still, he's still, you know, barrel-chested, really strong. Mm. And uh, and he still loves the club. You know, I use him from time to time to come in and speak to staff and and uh, just just create the, you know, continue that legacy at Kips Bay. He's a big part of that. Yeah. And I remember that. I remember when I was, I was on the national staff when he was doing that. Um, I didn't. I didn't find out till the tail tail end of it, and then I came came on national to, and Mount Vernon was one of my clubs. So, and I remember you sharing that with me. So, yeah, yeah, that's it. Jim was always there to help, man. He's always yeah. there to uh, pay it forward, as you say. Yeah, he was the best. So, 
And also, let, let me uh, get to this word of the week. I've been, uh, you know, I've been doing these uh, fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm now in faith. Right. I went through love, joy, peace, patient, kindness, goodness, and now faith. Um, one of my favorite words, uh, I, I guess my the number one favorite word is, uh, well, I don't know if it's a word, but wow is one of my favorite words. Everything is like, wow, you know, but and the other one is unique. It was a, it was a word that I, I learned uh, in, in the beginning in high school, the only one of its kind. So I think words, are, words are powerful. Words are important. But the word of the week today is faith. Mm -hmm. Right. You got a word for us? Well, you know, I, I mean, it's funny you say, wow, because that, that's my granddaughter's favorite word. That was actually <laughs> her first word. So she, she looks at this stuff and she she's always about wow. But, uh, you know, my, my I, I think the word that 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 I would have for your audience today is in, intentional. Uh, just be intentional about what you do um, when we when we. Well, as we go through life and, 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 you know, life has a way to kind of move us left and move us right and uncenter us sometimes and keep us from, from actually looking at what's important and what, what the goal is and what you're trying to accomplish. And I think when you, when you are intentional about what you have to do and how you live your life and what you want to achieve and, and how you want to achieve it, intentionality is a word that keeps you focused. It keeps you on the track. It keeps you um, dedicated and committed to uh, the the issue at hand. So uh, I, I unfortunately didn't learn this till a little later on in life. Uh, and, and I've been, my intentionality, I actually include <laughs> a lot of lists, a lot of lists uh, writing and 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 checking off those lists because I want to be intentional. I want to I want to say what I do and do what I say. And mm. if I come up with a list of things whether it's call, I got to call my brother, I got to call this sister, I got to I got to get this for my wife. I want to do this for my daughter. I want to be very intentional about how I'm going to do that, how I'm going to achieve it and and make sure it makes the proper impact. And, and, and the first way to do that, as a matter of fact, I was just talking to my son about this uh, literally two or three hours ago. Um, and he, he, he was t talking to me about staying focused. And, and I said, well, listen, one of the ways you stay focused is write a list for yourself. But <laughs> down to three, four, five things that you want to accomplish in the next day. And if you may do three or four of them, maybe you miss a couple of them, but it's going to keep you focused. So um being intentional on how you live your life whether it's helping others um helping yourself helping your family um really staying focused on the job at hand uh without intentionality it becomes very difficult lows and mm -hmm. uh i think over the last 10 12 years i've become very intentional about what i want to do in my professional life in my personal life in my family life um and and it's helped me really stay on that on that track. Uh, so that's my that's my word of the day. Oh yeah, I like that. It be intentional, <laughs> intentionality. Uh, and nah. and and uh, here's a, here's another thing. Uh, you know, you you would enjoy is uh, always have an affirmation of the week. The Hill Hopper Pierce Hopper affirmation quote moment. Uh, failing to prepare is failing to fail. Uh, John Wooden's quote, you know, failing to prepare is failing to it's fail. Preparing to fail. Yeah. It's preparing to fail. Yeah. 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 Preparing to fail. So yeah. Um, that's, that's the affirmation. You got a favorite? Cause I got a lot of them with, with John Wooden, particularly be quick, be fast, right? But never right. in a rush or a hurry. <laughs> right, right. Right. <laughs> um, I, I, I can't off the top of my head. I probably don't have, uh, uh, one, I'm sure while I'm talking to you, one will come to me, but, um, I, I, I think, you know, my, I think I got to tell you that my affirmations come from, um, 
pressing in and and under, and trying to understand God's will for my life. Mm. And this this small affirmation. I mean, uh, quick quick story quick story. Uh, I'm I'm sitting in a house right now that is much too big for my wife and I. All my children are gone. Um, but about a year ago, my 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 children, my my middle daughter was living with us about a year and a half ago, and um, and she was, you know, they're saving up and they they want to get their lives together. So we said, move in with us and save a little money and and um, and it'll all be good, right? So I was getting ready to sell this house, and I just felt like I'm sitting at my desk at work, and that's when. Again, I got an affirmation. I got a, <laughs> I, I got that welling up in my spirit where I really felt from God that this ain't the time, brother. Mm. Pump, pump. He, this is matter of fact. This is what I heard. Pump the brakes. <laughs> I mean, that's what I heard. Pump yeah, yeah. On this idea, <laughs> I remember. I'm, 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 I'm listening. I'm, I'm feeling like this, and the phone rings, and it was my wife. And she felt the same way. It was, she called me specifically for that, to talk about the. And about three weeks later, my daughter uh, was pregnant. Uh, she, uh, so we said, well, this kind of makes sense, right? Lord is telling us, stay cool, stay cool. You know, there's still some stuff for them to accomplish here. Long story short, they lived here for another year. Our grand, we saw our granddaughter born here. Um, Mm. They were able to really set themselves up to move to Plano. They're in Plano, Texas. They're doing great over there. And um, and now and now I can put my house on the market. You know? <laughs> but but you know and you know that's to me that's an affirmation that and 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 the good Lord provides these positive affirmations in a lot of different ways for for us. And and I think just being able to sit still and listen, um, you know. So, so I think that what that tells me is that I got to come up with my own. I got to oh, come okay. up with my own affirmations as a result of what God does in my life. That, that's I well, just came, I just come up with an idea. Yeah, well, if you're looking to write a book, <laughs> how about a book of affirmations? That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You think about whatever God gives you, put a date with it. Right. <laughs> yeah, because I hey. You know, I'm gonna go back to that. Can we go back to that affirmation that I have up there, real quick? Um, because I want to read it one more time. It says, you know, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. Uh, by Coach John Wooden, one of the most successful coaches of our of our time, 10 NCAA championships. Um, and he had a bunch of quotes, um, I, I, affirmations. I think they're powerful and and they're and they're very motivational. And yeah, I, I think you should. <laughs> you you should think about writing those things down and writing your affirmations down. And because you never know. My my friend Hugo, you don't you don't know Hugo, but uh, Hugo King. Mm -hmm. I love talking to him, man. Right? Because you know, I, I may be getting on, I want to be, you know, I'm not I'm being intentionally. I'm being intentional and about, you know, whining or whatever it is, you know, right, and, right. and, and he, he hits me with a, about 10 off the bat affirmations. affirmations. Yeah. yeah. Oh, like, and they all positive, man. So, yeah, you know, yeah, when, yeah. when you get off, you can't help but be positive. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and, yeah. and, and, and so here's my, um, my music and movie of the week. Right. And, um, of course, you know, one of your alumnus, uh, Jennifer Lopez, uh, what uh, she this this is a song uh, that you know love don't cost a thing, right? Right, and uh, you know I, I had checked out the little video, you know, uh, ni nice video, but I think the message was powerful, you know, because uh, I think the person that she was addressing uh, was you know thought that things was about love and mm -hmm. you know you can, he said she was just saying you can't pay for my love i mean you know it don't cost anything for me to love you right. you know uh which is a very powerful uh message love don't cost a thing and then also also movie ray 
uh, mm -hmm. Ray Charles, and then one of your other alumnus, Kerry Washington. Kerry Washington. So you got two alumnus here, and and uh, you know we're gonna we're gonna hear. I got a little video on them a little bit later. Okay. But uh, yeah, that's my my music of the week. My movie of the week and what's your favorite music and and movie oh, man guys you know you, you know <laughs> listen it's you're gonna freak when well i don't know maybe you will but i i'm a i'm a real i'm a real mobster flick fan man i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> my favorite movie of all time is the godfather man oh man and and, and, and i know i know <laughs> Well, you in all black right yeah. now, so <laughs> Al Pacino is my favorite actor of all time. It's Al Pacino, and and I, I know you're gonna think I'm just I'm just saying this, but no, it's not. It's Al Pacino and it's Denzel Washington. Okay, all Denzel right. and, and Al Pacino are right there for me. I love them. I mean, my two all time favorite actors. As a matter of fact, my son's favorite actor now is Denzel Washington. Okay. Uh, he actually says that I sound like him. I don't, I'm not sure if he's right or not. But <laughs> I, go, uh, I don't know. I listen to Denzel sometimes to see if I can hear myself, but I don't. But, but my point is that um, when I when I look, I think I get intrigued by The Godfather. And I got to tell you, if I'm flipping the channels and I come across The Godfather, I'm 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 gonna watch 15, 20, 40 minutes of it, no matter what. And I think mm. it's because um, I know it was for the wrong reasons. Let's put that out there right away. Right? <laughs> but it's there, there's there's other the, the 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 qualities or the qualities that or the let's 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 call them uh, attributes. The attributes that these individuals had uh, the 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 individual like uh, the, that Marlon Brando plays. He's the Godfather himself, but. The leadership skills, the organizational skills, um, the presence, the the presence mm. of self, and how these grown men, you know, would listen to this <laughs> one individual and why, and you know, so I think that's what translates <laughs> to me. Not the crime, not the not the getting rid of people. I, yeah. I'm not into that. But I, I I think just the the nuances of. Um, how how these organizations worked back then and to this day they still work so mm. i i i'm a real uh i'm a real mob buff but uh <laughs> more importantly is uh my my favorite my favorite actors is denzel and and, and al pacino uh and they're both going strong they're both still i mean al pacino's yeah. 80 plus and he's still uh um, still rocking and rolling irishman <laughs> Uh, which yeah. talked about Jimmy Hoffa <laughs> and the mob. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. You can't um, get away from it. <laughs> nah, man. Keeping it real. And uh, and Denzel, you know, I just love his work, whether it's, you know, the, the Equalizer or his work um, with uh, Viola, Viola, da Viola Davis. Viola Davis. Fences. Name? Yeah, Fences. Yeah, yeah man. That, I mean, he's just. Yeah. Really I, don't, I don't know if you, uh, you know, you just uh well you heard his voice but my that's what my my older son does he acts really and, okay. yeah and so he he got a chance to be denzel's understudy in fences oh wow yeah so, <laughs> so, that's good stuff, so brother. yeah it's good stuff man and um you know it, you know what's crazy about the mob movies man is is that no matter how old they are man they never get old you know so they don't. when when i was coaching with the uh high school team and we used to on our way you know about five years i was with them we went to this went to the state championships right so every time we get on the bus going up to glens falls it was always uh, put on the Godfather, you know, Al Pacino, show me your little friend. I got you, you got to watch this all the way every year. You know, I'm like, what do these kids know about the Godfather? But I mean, you know, I guess that's everybody's favorite. Whether it's Godfather, it's Goodfellas, uh, Char uh, you know, another great movie that is mob related also is a Bronx tale. Mm, yes. Yeah. Tom and Terry, um, I mean, these are all movies that obviously 
they they uh, unfortunately and unfortunately in a couple of them they glamorize a lifestyle that is is not pleasing to the to god or and and not great for society uh but the entertainment part of these movies is what what i actually uh, get into and i think it's and, and my wife believe me my wife cannot get over the fact that i'm always watching these mob flicks but, uh, <laughs> But I think it has it has to do with what I said earlier: uh, presence, leadership, organization, coordination, um, respect in community, respect in in, in family, um, and 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 those those are the the kind of positive things that you're able to take out of uh, movies that that might glamorize, unfortunately, un, unfortunate circumstances at times. But yeah, yeah. That, that's kind of like yeah. Kinda, and that, and since you since you mentioned Denzel, you know, hey, American Gangster, you I mean, you can get drawn to it. Yeah, I've you know, Training Day, time. you can get drawn to it. I mean, yeah, just yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I mean, but then Denzel, you know, he he's done, he runs the gamut from American Gangster to um, oh my gosh, you know, the, the movie with with Tom Hanks. Uh, about oh, a, yeah, Philadelphia story. Philadelphia story. I mean, you know, it just runs the gamut with Denzel, and I, I, I just don't get tired of, of Pelican Brief. I mean, I, I mean, you could go on and on, and um, he's just so entertaining. I, I'll always remember we were uh, we were at a National Youth of the Year event, and and we were taking a picture with a bunch of kids, and Denzel was standing right next to me. And, uh, <laughs> He starts talking trash about how Mount Vernon used to kick butt <laughs> in basketball like that. We never beat you. Nah, you guys never beat us. Are you kidding me, man? <laughs> how long have you been there? Were you a kid at the club? And I'm, yeah, I was a kid. Were you, I played little basketball. Man, you guys stunk, man. <laughs> I said, here he was 25, 30 years later. He's still talking trash about Oh, yeah, he doesn't forget. Yeah, yeah I think we, we, we're we going to show – uh show that i think we got that picture where's the denzel picture at i mean it. there you go yeah you <laughs> wow boy you're doing you're doing your research these days man. <laughs> yeah, oh man, man. So i know he's he's smiling at you like yeah man mom Vernon beat you up man he, he was talking big time <laughs> oh man I, and i'll never forget that he, he, i'm sure i'm sure he will he probably doesn't even remember me but my point is uh no, he don't forget many people now what well, i'm sorry he don't forget many people. Really? No. <laughs> Listen, he was so affable. And I've met him probably a handful of times uh, when I was at National and obviously at a couple of events. But, uh, yeah, one, one of my favorite actors, man. Uh, I, 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 there's not much I haven't seen that he's done. <laughs> and Pacino, the same thing. So uh, I, I, I feel... I, I feel like I'm 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 making good choices there, even though even though Pacino's out there with a couple of gangster flicks. But we're all right. <laughs> oh yeah. So <laughs> so let us digress for a moment and uh, let's get into Dan. You know, uh, you know, three powerful questions, man, for you um, that we like to talk about on the show. There's the many faces of Dan. Oh my gosh! And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love the one with the glasses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you quick chilling story. out. Quick, quick story, those glasses we ordered them like we ordered like a thousand of them to give out as giveaways for National Day for Kids, mm -hmm. and I had just gotten them, and I said, "Let me try them on, see how they look." And somebody <laughs> got me. And, uh, yeah, they got and, you. And we use it from time to time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you know, talk about the importance of family faith and education um you know we got a couple of family shots here but uh talk about the importance of that i, I think that's important uh for me you know yeah. importance of family faith and education well listen i i, I mean for me for, and i and i'm not gonna sit here and tell you that uh i had my priorities in order <laughs> all my life um i think and 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 i and i I go back to reading halftime and and Bob Buford and and also uh, other things that I picked up. You know, uh, I, the other the other you know I, the other book that I, that made a big impact in my life was the Roberto Clemente story. Oh yeah, and um, I, I actually 
I think I have it here. Roberto, I read this book oh, probably like 15, 20 years ago. And um, again, it, it, it kind of got me on got me on that on that road to what's important in life how do i prioritize paying as you said paying it forward how can i make somebody else's life better and and i'm gonna use a phrase hey, this is here goes an affirmation for you thinking beyond yourself is mm. more important than thinking of yourself Mm. That's a Dan Quintero. Yeah. <laughs> I don't give that to anybody. And you know who affirm that? My son, because I'm always like, think beyond yourself. <laughs> but my point is that um, when, when uh, as, you, as you're trying to succeed in, in your 20s and you're being ambitious and you want to you wanna really um, make a mark in this life and, and you know, you get so consumed with this stuff. And unfortunately, sometimes your family becomes secondary. Mm. And and then and then you start. I'm, then I'm with you on that. I am with you. I'm with you on yeah. that. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and then life happens, right? Mm -hmm. you start knocking you upside the head. And you start realizing, wow, this isn't as important as I thought it was. Um, you know, my my wife is more important. My children are more important. Uh, my family unit and how they develop and how they grow is more important. Now, 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 granted, when you part of my ambition was always to create something better that that I had that what than what I had growing up. Uh, we always want the generations to be better, right? As mm -hmm. as, as as we go forward, and I think that actually unfortunately took over my mindset and it was about getting ahead doing better making more money uh creating creating a better life for my children um having more as, as than than what i had than my mom and dad had um and that's not all bad but uh when you sit down and you really take inventory um it's really the time you spend with your children, the time you spend with your li with your wife, the time all of us are together, um, the times that we can talk about uh, faith, uh, graduations, uh, <laughs> spending Christmases together. That's what that <laughs> picture represents there. We get pajamas every Christmas and we put on the same PJs and, and that's what we do. Um, and 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 what comes of that? The conversations that come from that, the development that comes from that, the uh, the empowering advice both ways. Because I I learn a lot from my children nowadays. Um, that's invaluable, and you're not going to get that back. That that stuff that you uh, that you you you're able to attain, and and if if you don't if you never get it, uh, I think you're at a loss. So. Mm. Uh, when I speak of our family unit, as as we get ready for the holidays and we will all descend on into Palm Beach County, Florida, because that's where everybody's going now. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's heartwarming. It's it's a blessing. Uh, it's a it's a reflection of God's grace in our lives that. Now we have a family of nine. I'm, I'm hesitating because <laughs> granddaughters. So I have, we have a family of nine and uh, we will all be in the same place, enjoying each other's company, um, you know, going to, you know, Christmas Eve service together, uh, praising the Lord together, coming back, having a meal together, uh, exchanging gifts together uh, and and making memories now for many years that are so much more important than how much money you make, uh, how much money you raised, how many boys and girls <laughs> clubs you created. Um, <laughs> it just is, and I'm not and I'm not minimizing what we've done. You know, I think our work is very important, but when you, when you're able to initiate that in your home and be mm. 
the priest of your home and the example in your home that talk about paying it forward forward that will multiply tenfold to many other individuals communities people that my children touch and that they touch and who they touch so um that's an that's an amazing neck network marketing um that's an amazing network marketing uh, process that I think God has developed in a great way to really show that families should come first. And mm. that nuclear family, uh, enjoying each other's company, sharing each other's company, and being an example for other families and other individuals will only make you know this good world, this world we live in, a, a much better place. So. Um, that's that's kind of how we're living uh, these days, and and we're we're grateful for that. You know. Yeah, I think that network marketing uh, <laughs> piece is called legacy. It's called called legacy. Yeah, yeah, and and you you know you're laying a foundation that's going to be carried forward long after you're gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then and I, I don't mean to get a it, you you asked me there was three, that was a three pronged question right what yeah was, faith and education right so so faith goes hand in hand with family I I, I mean where where, 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 I, where it should yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean for for us uh, family became important most mo very important as a result of our faith. Mm -hmm. um our faith taught us how important we are to each other our faith taught us that when there are difficulties we press in and who do we go to uh we go right. to him first and then we go to each other right mm -hmm. um so that faith has been kind of symbiotic with our family uh and it's su such an important piece to who we are what we believe and what we exemplify uh without a doubt and then the education piece as i said earlier and this might be a little sacrilegious but um i i share with my i share with my personal children and also with a lot of kids at the club that a good solid education is important i would i would love my you know my kids all went to college um my son graduated from ramapo uh, my daughter went to Palm Beach Atlantic, graduated from Palm Beach Atlantic in Palm Beach County. And my other daughter graduated from Nyack College. All very good schools, but they're not Harvard, they're not Yale, they're not, you know, Ivy League. And quite frankly, I'm very big. I get on my soapbox about getting a good, solid education. But as important as your education is how you relate to people how you develop your relationship skills, how you develop your connectivity skills, mm. because that along with your education is gonna uh, get you to where you need to go. Mm. Um, you, 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 can't, you, can't, you can't have uh, all this knowledge and not be relatable, because once you're not relatable, you know, you're not gonna be much good to, to many people. I, there's there's a there's a saying in in the faith based community uh, so heavily minded that you're no earthly good. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, <laughs> you can't be so educationally minded that you're no you you're not practically good. Uh, so you have to be able to really connect with people, uh, meet them meet them where they're at. Uh, that's so important. Be able to. Uh, socialize and and have socialization skills so that individuals feel comfortable with you um can share with you uh can trust you and 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 as a, as as a result you can impart right because if they mm -hmm. trust you and they feel comfortable with you and they're able to 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 get to a point where they can share anything with you now you're in a position that you can help them. That's right. And 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 those socialization and relationship skills really come into play, and 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 now you're pouring into somebody's life. Mm. So, 
Uh, when I talk about education, I really stress relationship skills and socialization skills and being able to look, I mean, from, from stuff as simple as looking people squarely in the eye and communicating uh, directly, um, um, you know, uh, in a very direct fashion, a very confident fashion uh, is very important. And as it relates to getting your point across, getting individuals to take you seriously, <laughs> you never want to walk in a room and be dismissed. I don't want right. to be dismissed. And, and I talk to my kids, listen, the, your first impression is going to be 50, 60% of that, of that meeting, whatever you're trying to accomplish. And then the academia is going to take over how you speak, uh, how intelligent you sound, your vocabulary, uh, your background in education. Yeah. But if your relationship skills and socialization skills are not there, they're going to dismiss you and you, you're not going to be any good to anybody. So. Mm -hmm. Those two things really have to go hand in hand. Um, and look, if you and I believe me, and people listening to this, please, I have nothing against Harvard and Yale. They're great schools. I love them. <laughs> but uh, not everybody can afford to go there, right? And not right. everybody can go to Colgate or Ivy League schools. Or, but everybody can afford to develop their relationship skills and socialization skills. That's going to get you in the door. And then your academia is going to take you to the next level. Yeah, I like that, man. I like that yeah. a lot, man. And and um, yeah, and we, we're going to pivot for a moment because, uh, you know, first of all, let me say this real quick. Uh, again, thank you for for watching the blueprint each and every week. And you remember that this is interactive. So if you have some questions, I already Dan is Dan has made some uh, some. Well, my grandfather used to say, come over here, boy, let me give you some nuggets. I, I mean, because uh, I was looking for some nuggets. Probably if it, if it was in this time, we'd probably be looking for some chicken nuggets. But, uh, right. you know, and then Dame Lillard and uh, dropping dimes. Dan has been dropping dimes all night. Mm -hmm. Right. So you might have some questions or comments that you might want to make it. We'll see them down at the bottom of the screen uh, so you can you can do so. And 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 as we pivot, you know course dan is the executive director of the kips bay boys and girls club and uh man he he provides programming for kids 16 6 to 18 mm -hmm. and he had check this out 10 locations now uh you know he has 10 locations now four freestanding buildings three schools two homeless shelters and the senior citizens programs i mean operating budgets over 10 million dollars right uh you know he's doing his thing kips bay uh 250 staff members and 10,000 youth being served so uh he's doing his thing i'm proud of him man <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you you know i wanted to be you when i grew up man <laughs> so well, so that. Yeah, so talk about the club, man, because that though that's amazing work, man. And you know what? Um, and you 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 and I both agree with this. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, sometimes we see some we only see ministry in 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 in, in four four walls. We see them in the church, right? Right. And and that the, the blueprint is about you know the lifestyle of seven spheres of influence and 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 God gives us gifts uh, right. to impact these influences, these 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 spheres of influence, and 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 it's not always standing in a pulpit, right? Although we one hundred, both of us one hundred percent agree, we need to be in church, <laughs> right? Yeah. We we need to go to church. We you know, but you know, sometimes all of our ministries are not in the church. You know, God tells us to go, and certainly Dan. Dan has gone. I mean, he's he's in the sphere of influence, you know, impacting what oh, ten thousand kids, right? Uh, each and every day. So talk about that. Talk about that experience, man, and and and, and your passion for it, man. Well, as I said earlier, I, I mean, I, I I had no idea I was gonna I was gonna be in this position, and 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 you know, when I went to college, I I, I went to college because I wanted to be a baseball player. Um, and I wasn't, I, I'm, I'm not gonna sit here and say I was a great student, but 
I had to pass my classes in order to play baseball. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I, did, I did decently, let's put it that way. Uh, but, you know, I, and I, I was able to sign a contract with the Kansas City Royals and, and that was a great experience. I, I played a couple of years in the minor leagues and I played in the Dominican Republic for one season. And, uh, and then that I got released and like anything else, you know, like anything else at that level, and you could relate to this lows, you know, basketball was a job, baseball was a job. And like any other mm -hmm. job, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, they're gonna fire you. So mm -hmm. it, for all intents and purposes, I was released and, um, and I said, you know, what am I gonna do with the rest of my life? And the first thing I thought about was what made the biggest impact on my life growing up mm -hmm. as a child? And it was a very easy answer. It was the, the Kips Bay Boys and Girls Club. Um, so I ended up getting a job at the club, but I, I got it at Madison because you know I, I knew Kips Bay would help me, but I didn't want I didn't want the help. I wanted to get it on my own. And um, as as I got in, into this career, and, and and I went on to the national organization, what really moved me was my boys and girls club experience. Mm -hmm. And I talked about socialization and connectivity and engagement skills and and how important that is and relationship skills. I learned that at the club. That's where I learned it. Mm -hmm. I learned it in the game room. I learned it arguing on the basketball court. I learned it trying to get the umpire to change his strike call to a <laughs> ball. I, I mean, these are the lessons you learn at a boys and girls club. Uh, the, the, the leadership skills, the management skills. I mean, you learn. I learned it on the athletic field. You know, people don't realize what takes place when when 10 kids are in a gym and they're choosing up a game of basketball, okay, they, they're choosing up, you got two captains, one of them has, to, they, they each have to pick, okay, I have this guy, okay, I'll take that guy. All right, okay, you're gonna play this position, I'll play that position. All right, this, I mean, there are decisions that have to be made in a pickup basketball game. Mm -hmm. there, there, there are uh, leadership skills that are gonna be utilized in a pickup basketball. This is a very simple concept of pickup basketball game. <laughs> That's right. In that basketball game, you are learning leadership skills, decision-making skills, um, and that translates over into your personal life. And when I grew up at, a, at, at the Kips Bay Boys and Girls Club, these are the things that were imparted to me, not only through staff that were helping me, but also learning by doing, learning by being involved, learning by defending yourself verbally, unfortunately, sometimes physically too. <laughs> but my point is, it, all of that is important. All as, as a good friend that I have, all parts are welcome. A good friend of mine always telling me that. Everything is welcome, the good, the bad, uh, the experiences, all of that is welcome because all of that is gonna mold us into who we are. And those relationship skills and connected connectivity skills and socialization skills, all of those things came from the Boys and Girls Club. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't also mention that they also came from church. Mm. I grew up in church and I, and I was in youth group. Again, Boys and Girls Club, youth group. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And in youth group, I used to have, have to lead the service sometimes or I was the president of the youth youth group, or at the Boys and Girls Club, I was the captain of the junior leaders, right? So mm -hmm. again, leadership skills, um, being an example for others, um, speaking in a way that others are gonna wanna follow you, yes. all right? Those are the things that you learn at a club that in a very simplistic way, whether you're playing ping pong in the game room, or choosing up a game of basketball uh, in the gym, those are things that our children are learning at the Boys and Girls Club. So as I got through life and I grew up at the club, these are the skills that I was able to mm -hmm. develop, attain, grow with at the club. And some of it, some of it came as a result of me being involved, but a lot, a lot of it also was re-emphasized by the staff that was there. Mm -hmm. And the staff would recognize, obviously, and I know you can relate to this, and I know Denzel talks about it when we were growing up in Mount Vernon. He had a favorite staff member. I forget his name right now. but uh, Billy Thomas. Billy Thomas, yeah. Mm -hmm. That 
when Billy used to tell him, hey, you should be involved in this or you should uh, be uh, try out for this team. You know, those are those are words that had have heaviness to them. Right. The, when they came from Billy Thomas, when they came from certain staff members at Kips Bay, they had weight to me. And I go, they know what they're talking about. I'm going to do it. So that 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 staff portion, whether it was the Boys and Girls Club professional or maybe the youth group leader in my youth group at church, <laughs> those things had weight and they imparted wisdom and skills and, mm. and also confidence into my life. And as a result, I was able to develop my relationship skills, my confidence, my presentation skills. Um, also, being uh, my, my assertiveness. This is who I am, guys. You got to take me or leave me. But this is who <laughs> I am. You uh, and I would hope that you you take me. You know, you you take what I say seriously, and you're able to. Uh, I'm able to impart some wisdom and and pour into your life. But also be confident and and comfortable in your skin. And those are the things that, as I grew up at the club and as I grew up in church, those are the things that really made me who I am today. And I, I'm so grateful for that. Uh, and when I look at when I look at my staff and we have staff trainings and we talk about different programs to implement this. This is always part of it. I mean, my staff, my staff always listens to me about socialization and the the education of socialization and and connective connectivity and um, because it, it's it's as important as a solid uh, education uh, as as it relates to moving forward in your life. Yeah, and I like uh, Billy Thomas. I had uh, Mr. Jones. He was over at the North Side right. Club, right? Yeah. And you know. Uh, <laughs> You know, when I uh, he used to always tell his brother who was working in the gym or myself when I first became the executive director and I was like, some kids weren't, weren't working out. Right. And and uh, he used to tell them, tell us as a unit director, you know, when kids come in, you have no idea what they went through that day. Right. Uh, did the kid eat that day? Mm -hmm. Did they get into a conflict that day? So when they walk through the door, you may see an angry kid, right? But you don't know what they've been through, right? Right. So you have to approach them differently when they walk inside that, when they walk inside that building, right? And you got to treat them with love, you know, and you got to draw them in and out of that thing that they're dealing with right now, you know, yep. or whatever they've been experiencing or find out what that is so that you can help find a solution for it, yep. you know, and, and that, that is a real power uh, of the club and let me let me show you um um one of your alumnus uh we all had alumnus in our clubs but yeah yeah look, we're going to show you one right now the boys and girls club is instrumental in creating great citizens you know people who know how to interact well with others kids who believe in themselves kids who know that they're capable of greatness there was a, a very special dance teacher at our club named Larry. Um, and I actually have these very beautiful memories of Larry doing duet dances with Jennifer Lopez because she was one of the big girls. Um, and so the little girls would all crowd in the wings backstage and watch the two seasoned dancers rule the stage. Um, and he was a very important mentor to me. I remember one weekend he gave me a, a lead in one of the big dance numbers and I was so excited. And then the next day he kind of forgot and gave it to another girl and I was devastated. And, uh, and he saw me kind of really upset in the corner and he pulled me aside because that's what adults do at the club. They really care and they pay attention. And he said, you know, what's going on? And, and I said, oh, I just, I don't know if I did something wrong or and then he remembered and he said, Carrie, you always have to speak up for what's yours. And I will never forget that. We'll never forget that. The Boys and Girls Club is a place where somebody knows who you are. They know where you're from. They know what you care about. They know what you want to do. They know what you want to be. And they're there to help you with all of that. You can't replace that. Boys and Girls Clubs, great futures start here.
Yeah, that's that's kind of what you've been talking about. Yeah, that's uh, boy, I'm on the, I guess I'm on the right track. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. Um, you know, I had the good fortune of of knowing Larry. I knew Larry uh, Maldonado. His name is Larry Maldonado. Uh, I remember. I remember Larry. Yeah. Well, you do. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I do remember Larry. Yeah. Because you had Larry and you had Harold. Harold worked for many years later. Uh, Larry, unfortunately, passed away uh, in the in the early 90s, if I'm not mistaken. But um, Larry, I actually used to be upset at Larry. I would be up to, so upset at Larry because Larry was the performing arts guy, right? Mm -hmm. And I was a gym rat. And the <laughs> performing arts guys used to take over the gym. And I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't play ball. So... I, you know, me and Larry used to be at odds. Now, I was 10, 11 years old. Larry was like 21, 22, 23. Right, right. But Larry was the, uh, Larry initiated the performing arts program at the Kips Bay Boys and Girls Club. Uh, Jennifer Jennifer Lopez was one of his initial students, along with many others. And then Kerry was even a younger uh, student at that time. And uh, he has left a legacy at the club. I mean, uh, there are many, many uh, performers that come back and talk about Larry's impact on, on their lives. And when you hear Kerry talking about, he said how important it is to have a voice. Mm. You have to have a voice. That's, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, you, <laughs> you got to connect. You have to, so you, you got to be assertive. You got to say what you want, say what you mean. And, and people will respect you for that. And the, the club staff imparts that. The club staff really instills that in the children that we, uh, that, that we serve. And, and you got to, you know, Lowe's, a lot of the kids that we serve, man, they, they struggle. They struggle at home economically. They struggle at home from a food standpoint. They struggle at home uh, from an attention, an attention deficit standpoint. Mom and dad aren't around. Well, when they come to the club, we fill all those voids, man. And yeah. when we fill all those voids, this is the this is the fruit of our labor, the Kerry Washingtons, the Jennifer Lopez's. But you know, guess what? There's so many doctors, uh, lawyers, plumbers, carpenters, police officers that come back and and say thank you. Not only to me, to a lot of our staff that that uh, a lot of our staff that really have done a great job uh, for such a long time. So uh, I, I just feel honored to to be in the position of managing these folks and and imparting. The, the, the little intellectual capital that I may have and the years <laughs> of service that, that I may have been able to attain and acquire some knowledge and then turn that around to my staff and impart uh, that, that bit of wisdom. I just feel blessed that God has put me in this position and, and I'm able to do that. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, that, yeah. I, I think we all are blessed, you know, we, you know, look at, you know, people look at oh, an executive director, but when you turn around and look, you look at how blessed you are. You know, to wake up every day mm. and 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 be around such wonderful young people and family. I mean, you know that you 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 know. Just the other day, I I was somewhere. Well, actually, I was at the. They were preparing for the uh, program they have in uh, tonight, yesterday, and uh, last night, and tonight. And I, and I walk in the Dole Center and, you know, when the young ladies, I remember she was a little, you know, a little, little tiny girl dancing, you know, and mm -hmm. she seen me. She just came out of nowhere. Oh, my God, Mr. Ball. You know, like, <laughs> you know, we truly we're blessed by our kids, our, per, our own our kids. kids right. Yeah. And, and then but, we got this extended family, mm -hmm. you know, and you see them everywhere. You yes, know, sir. yeah, and and then now you're starting to see. We've been there long enough to start seeing them have their families. Their families, right? <laughs> you know that, and that's very powerful, man. And it is a bless. Uh, it is a blessed situation to to actually uh, be in. I want to show you some friends, man. I, you had some friends up there. I mean, some uh, some you know, some <laughs> celebrity friends uh, that that stop by Kids Bay all you know all the time. But that there there's a. Oh. <laughs> My man DJ, <laughs> yeah, Derek Jeter. I don't know what he was signing there. 
it's something that we something that we were able to uh, auction off obviously oh, okay <laughs> it's, always, it's always about raising money you know that yeah 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 and he's the young jeter that's yeah. right well it, just a little background on that picture he had just won rookie of the year and he came to the club bearing a $25,000 gift as a result of major league baseball choosing the Kips Bay Boys and Girls Club and Derek Jeter was was the presenter of that check um and that I'm I'm actually that's in my office at the club I mean I was I was 36 years old <laughs> crazy that, yeah. was, that was about that was that was 26 years ago and and about 38 pounds ago <laughs> we all saying the same thing yep, you know yep. and then of course the Yankees you know you yeah know. And look the Yankees have been such an integral part of of what we're doing what we've done at Kips Bay uh we built a new facility literally a mile away from Yankee Stadium uh, they helped they helped us raise some money at the time uh we have an event at Yankee Stadium every year which raises upwards of uh a hundred thousand dollars a year uh they also uh, have a foundation that supports the kips bay boys and girls club and you know over the years when we've needed uh a ball player to come in and talk to the kids or a ball player to come to a special event uh they've been nice enough to to provide that uh i have a great relationship with mr brian smith uh the government VP of Government Affairs at, at the stadium. I'm actually on, on the diversity committee right now. Uh, oh, nice. I think the Yankees actually realized about a few years ago that uh, we need more representation, more Latino <laughs> and American representation. Yes. So uh, their whole coaching system throughout their minor leagues has gotten more diverse. Uh, even at the major league level, uh, they, they hired a third base coach that's a Latino gentleman. That used to co actually manage the Mets. Now he's the third base coach of the Yankees. Um, but even within their within their administrative structure, they, uh, as a result of our diversity meetings, they they've been able to address some issues, um, which which have been great. But the Yankees in general uh, have always been a partner uh, to the Kips Bay Boys and Girls Club. We're grateful for that relationship uh, and all the players that they've pro provided: Brian Smith, Brian Cashman, Randy Levine. And uh, obviously the Steinbrenner family, they've been really good to us. So we're very appreciative of their support. Yeah. And Brian Smith is an alumnus of the Mount Vernon Boys and Girls. Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. I forgot about that. I'm glad you yeah. that. Brian is a Mount Vernon guy. Listen, there's some great people that came from Mount Vernon. Not just oh. Lowe Moore and Brian Smith, but man, I can't, you know, I think Mount Vernon is like a four by four mi mile 4.2 right? square miles. 4.2 square miles. And if you started writing down all the successful, impactful people that came from Mount Vernon, that, that would be a long list. Yes, it, I would. Know it would. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Great brothers. I mean, just in sports alone, but not only in sports, in a lot of different industries. Oh, yeah, definitely. But out of so Mount Vernon yeah. has really produced some great folks, man. Yeah, uh, maybe it's the water over there. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know what it is, but it, it, it it's done its job and yeah. still doing oh, it. Listen, you can't lose sight of the fact that it's probably how that that cycle of paying it forward and people exemplifying for others and being examples for others. Uh, I, I, you can't, you can't lose sight of the fact that that has to have something to do with it. Because when you have that many people coming from such a small place is because the people in front of them are inspiring the people behind them. So without a doubt, that has to have the low moors of the world were blazing the trail for the Ben Gordons of the world. Am I correct? Mm. Why not? Yeah, yeah without I, a doubt. I feel very confident in saying that. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, you know, when when you got guys, you know, like, you know, Denzel or, you know, the, the it starts with the basketball. You know, and then you had be even before them, you go to Ralph Brinker, you know, uh, That's you know, right. for the Brooklyn Dodgers. So, yeah. yeah. So you see somebody do something mm -hmm. right. They become a light to you. Mm -hmm. Right. And you start following that light and you say, I want to the next thing you know is is Ralph Brinker is, is Ken Singleton. Right? right. I mean, so it just it just it just catches like wildfire. And yeah. Somebody says, well, I'm not good in that sphere of influence. <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. And this time I'm going to rap. So you get P Diddy and you get heavy D and the boys and, you know, so everybody finds their own niche. That's right. 
you know, and they and they do their own thing. And and this goes for mayors, doctors, lawyers, teachers, mm -hmm. it, it just police officers, firemen. I mean, it just it's just ongoing. Yep. You know, so um I got one more for you. Um, one more little video here. Let's see here. I'm enjoying I'm <laughs> you enjoyed it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay, here we go. Bringing me down memory lane. Memory lane. <laughs> it gave me a place to go. It started my kind of creative side. It's where I first learned how to really dance um, through a great program that was there. It, it gave you a sense of kind of like belonging. And so, you know, you live in this neighborhood and, uh, and you walk to this club and you go in there and all of a sudden you're part of something really big and amazing, it feels like. And uh, at the same time, it feels like yours, like a club, like you're part of this great club. And I would dance and spend my afternoons there and then go home for dinner and dream about the next day and what we were going to do. And, and it just gave me a great sense of hope and a really, really kick-started my dreams. There was uh, Harold and uh, Larry Maldonado, Lorenzo Maldonado. Harry ran um, the back part of the club, which was the arts and entertainment part of the club, and where they had just built this new wing with a stage and everything. And I think of Larry and how much he took me and my sister and one of my best friends under his wing and really, really showed us what it was to be a performer. And it was one of the best times of my life. It's never something that's going to get old, you know, kind of nurturing children or helping them dream or giving them self-esteem or giving them a sense of community. Um, it's something that we're always going to need. It's just as important now as ever. Boys and Girls Clubs, great futures start here. Kiss Bay Boys and Girls Club, Dan Contreras in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it's nice to see Jennifer and, and, and the success she's had. And uh, I, I I don't think many people know this. Jennifer's sister actually works for us right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, she's no, much, we don't know that. Uh, I our, think we I think we got a couple of pictures with you and Carrie and and and, and Jennifer too as, as well. Yeah. We, well, we, uh, yeah, well, Carrie, <laughs> Carrie was nice enough to come back to the club a few years ago. Um, she was she was on Broadway. Oh yeah, that was last time Jennifer came by. <laughs> and and uh, Jer um, I forget the play. That, it was a great great show on Broadway that that um, she did a little limited run. Carrie and she she gave tickets to all our kids, and then we did a Q and A afterwards. Uh, and then Jennifer came by and visited with our performing arts program. But again, you know, these are two examples of, of Kips Bay alum that have had illustrious careers, right? Really public careers and, and success. But listen, I, I've been in Barbados and I've been in, in like, uh, you know, on vacation in, in Florida and in Puerto Rico and I have my Kips Bay shirt on. And I got I got alumnus coming up to me. Like, hey, man, I, I used to go to Kips Bay, and my buddy, we start shopping it up, and it's amazing. You know, you run into I'm sure you run into Mount Vernon alumni all the time. I mean, oh. it's an amazing experience. It's a it's a family experience. It's a a relatable experience. It's an experience that um, Jennifer talks about a sense of belonging. Yeah, you're part of that big, big old gang of boys and girls club. <laughs> that's right, members, man. That's that's the ultimate gang. I mean, you know, why do kids, you know, join gangs? They want a sense of belonging. They want to belong to something. Listen, join the club. The, mm. the boys and girls club is the biggest gang you could join, and you would be you will be poured into for the rest of your life, and you'll end up pouring into others. You know, I tell I tell a lot of my donors, I said, listen. Even if even if you you know even if you're not into charity or you or you want to help kids or maybe this is not your thing, but if you have money and you want to make the world a better place, think about it. When you support a boys and girls club, the boys and girls club creates positive contributors to society, right? Mm -hmm. And when you create positive contributors to society, what happens? There's less people 
um, taking advantage of, 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 of public assistance, taking advantage of food stamps, taking advantage of you, you and, and, and instead, they, instead of them pulling out, they're pouring in because now they're mm -hmm. successful individuals making good money and paying their taxes. And now it's the opposite happens, right? You you empower the economy, you empower the community around you. So it has this domino effect that people don't realize. I know I know a lot of times we talk about, okay, you know, help let's help our children because they want to go to school or help our children because they want to play baseball in the summer. Listen, you help our children, it has a long lasting legacy effect on the community. The community becomes better because you have more successful people around that are creating a better community. And, and, and that's amazing. I mean, I don't think people think about that when they, when they actually support uh, a, a, a charity like a Boys and Girls Club. Yeah. It's like I say when I started the show, man, because, I, you know, uh, um, the name of the blueprint, it was something that when I wrote my book, um, Pauletta Washington said, man, Hey man, this is like a blueprint, mm. you know? Yeah. And, and then, uh, you know, Denzel said in, in the forward, he said, you know, Lowe's like a pebble mm. and upon you've yet to see the ripple effect of his life. Right. And, and, and so, yeah, that's what happens when you invest in young people, yep. you know, when you invest in families, it becomes somewhere down the road, it becomes a ripple effect. Mm hmm right they 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 start paying it forward you know like mr jones for me you know i was becoming successful and i said you know mr jones when i become successful what would you want and he said uh you know i would want you to find another person like yourself and do something for them wow you know so he he didn't ask me for no car or a house you know i mean even though you know if i had the ability i would have done it right you, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And, and that's the power of it. And, you know, uh, I think a lot of clubs aspire to be, you know, Madison Square, Kipps Bay, um, Boys and Girls Club. I mean, you're in very powerful cities, you know, with a lot of influence. And uh, for years, I always, you know, I was you guys do a, a fundraiser, you know, for years, I always like, man, when. I don't know if we're ever going to be able to do one of these, man, but it's one of the unique fundraisers. I always, I said, I got to ask Dan, this is a curiosity question because mm -hmm. now you used to take a house and, 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 and transform a whole house. Right. Yeah. So talk a little bit about that. And here's a picture, uh, you know, a picture. Now you didn't, you used to do it in New York. Now you, now you're just taking it on the road. Right. And there's a curiosity question down there uh, real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah. where were you guys at doing this and talk talk about this fundraiser man talk well listen 47 48 years ago um uh, actually more than that because the pandemic got in the way but so in 1972 a bunch of women got together and they said how do we raise money but we don't want to do a dinner we don't want to do the chicken dinner you know and a couple of designers uh that were the women were into interior design. They said, let's get a house, let's design it, and then let's get paid, charge people to come see it. Well, lo and behold, the Kips Bay, the Kips Bay Show House started in 1973, if I'm not mistaken. And um, for 47, 48 years, we did a house. We, we invite designers from all over the world to come in, design, design the usually 15,000 square foot house. And it becomes basically a design museum to the general public. General public pays $40 to come in and see what these designers have done to this room, to this, these rooms in this house. And um, we get about 15, 20,000 people come in and see this, this beautiful house that has been designed by these tremendously talented designers. And it raises about a million dollars for us. And we did so well in that event that we took it on the road and we do the picture you just showed is uh <laughs> the one in palm beach county uh florida and we just finished our third season in in texas in dallas texas mm -hmm. uh, and we are contemplating uh la county so we might be going to hollywood oh, uh, oh nice so, uh, nice <laughs> we're considering it 
But you know, th this is this is an event that has really empowered us, not only from a fundraising standpoint, but it's introduced us to a lot of people that have helped us out moving forward. So we're we're pretty uh, firmly entrenched in the design industry, and and they've always been very supportive and helpful in in, in helping us implement the programs at the Kipsway Boys and Girls Club. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. And and then uh, finally, uh, we're going to run over by a few minutes here. That's but, fine. Uh, but uh, finally, um, I want to show this last video um, and then uh, I want to talk about teens and, and I want to talk about the blue door real quick. Uh, mm. Yeah, you're on the speaker phone now. Yes, everybody's excited about it. We won! Yeah. there was a, a national contest to design a blue door uh welcoming you know welcoming uh the keep uh, the club members you know what, what exemplifies the club and the door that that kids come through on a daily basis and uh we were part of three or four finalists and that was jim uh the national president jim uh uh Oh my gosh, I forget his last name for a second. <laughs> Clark. Uh, Jim Clark, yeah. Uh, thanks, folks. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Jim Clark was on the phone and, and uh, he, he was announcing the winner, winner and it was very hard to hear. But it, it's, it, again, it's, it was a community uh, event. It was the kids got involved. It exemplifies the kind of unity and teamwork and, and, and just what it means to be part of something larger than yourself. So mm -hmm. every little kid, and, and there was a lot of parents there that day that really felt that community spirit. That's a club that is in the poorest uh, district in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. um, and when you accomplish uh, events and, and, and programs of that nature and, and make them winners, so to speak, uh, it just does a lot. It does a lot for their self-confidence, for their self-worth, for putting them on the map. One of the problems we had when we first built that club was that that community, you know, we were having difficulty with attendance. And I said, what's going on, man? We, this is a state-of-the-art facility. How come? And as time went on, we realized that the community was telling us, oh, oh, this is for us? Mm -hmm. they they deserve something so nice. It was really sad to hear this. So we had to redouble our marketing efforts to let the community know, yes, this is for you. Your children can come here after school. They can learn that the culinary arts center, there's a, a digital arts center, there's a, there's a recording studio, there's a homework help and tutoring center. I mean, this is where kids can grow and be poured into and can develop. And guess what? You don't have to worry about their safety. They're in a nice, nurturing, and safe environment. So that was 10, 12 years. That was in 2010, 12 years ago now. And uh, we won that Blue Door contest. And that was a great, <laughs> great achievement for the community there. And that, that club continues to flourish. Like I said, they just opened the Culinary Arts Center. Uh, we just 
initiated a social and emotional wellness program to meet the kids, uh, the needs of our kids in the emotional wellness sphere, which is so mm -hmm. important nowadays, especially coming off the pandemic and and all that they have to deal with. So we just we just hired an organizational psychologist. She hired a couple of interns and MSWs, and that's going to be a big part of our program moving forward. Identifying youngsters that really need these types of services so that we can meet them where they are. And that and that's really our goal, right? We got to meet these children where they are. We have to meet these families where they are. And mm -hmm. as I've gotten older and 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 the the other stuff is not as important and uh, to mm -hmm. me what's important to me now is families and serving not only the child but serving the entire family. So we have 10,000 children, but we have 10,000 families that we That's serve. right. So mm -hmm. there's many more than just the children. And that is so important as we move into the, move into this journey called Boys and Girls Club, because it's great. It's great to meet the needs of the kids. But when mom and dad, you know, can't work or don't have food on the table, that still becomes an issue. You know, mm. so more and more we're providing we're, we're partnering with the Food Bank of New York. We're partnering with the New York Yankees. We're feeding the families that send their kids to us. Our children. We, we 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 feed more than 1200 kids on a daily basis at the boys and girls club but we also want to feed their families and th these are the types of programs where there's emotional wellness the culinary arts uh digital arts coding and things of that nature mm -hmm. we really want to meet the needs of the community and, and and the kids as to where they are right now and uh not that we're on the cutting edge because a lot of organizations are doing it but I'm glad that we're able to do that. Yeah. Wow. So Dan, um, you know, thanks a lot, man. I, I do appreciate this time with you. My pleasure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've enjoyed it. There's so much more. I mean, we could we we could talk so much more in regards to uh teen development, you know, yeah. which really need which really needs us at this time. Um, and and so yeah, I I remember the kids Bay boys and girls. They had the dental, you know, you know, you can go there. You had the uh, you can go there and, right. and get your, your your dental health done, right. and you know, you had a yeah, and you almost talking about like a, having a a family life center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you it's know, one stop shopping, right? For a parent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, powerful We're man. In that we can provide this. Yeah, that's yeah. good, man. So. Yeah. Again, thank you, man, for taking time out of your busy schedule. And Lowe's, uh, Lowe's I have thoroughly enjoyed myself. I don't usually <laughs> talk for an hour and a half straight, but now I know I can do that. I can do that. So that, that's a good thing. And really, uh, I feel blessed. I feel honored and humbled that you would even want to talk to me for an hour and a half. I don't think my wife wants to talk to me for an hour and a half. <laughs> but listen, man, we have to continue the journey that we're on because I know that you impact the lives of children and families as well. And you've done that for many years. So kudos to you, be blessed. God bless your family. And however I can help moving forward. I know this isn't the last of us together. So yes. let's be in touch. Okay, no problem, man. God bless all you, right. man. Yeah. Appreciate you. And, and to all of you out there, again, I wanna say thank you for your support each and every week. Man, I love you guys, man. We're coming up on the ho holiday season, man, look, as I say each and every week, right? Uh, if you wake up tomorrow, make tomorrow your masterpiece. I love you guys and look forward to seeing you next week. We really hope you enjoyed this episode of Lowe's More, the Blueprint Podcast. Stay connected and follow us at our website, www.lowesmore.com. That's L O W E S M O O R E.com. You can also join the discussion on Twitter at Lowe's Moore and on Facebook at Lowe's Moore Jr. As always, thank you for pushing your mindset towards a better reality. This concludes the most thought-provoking portion of your day. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast to stay fully up to date with everything we're up to. Until next time, be kind to yourself and each other. With the eating is a joke, I ain't buying it like I'm broke. Insufficient funds for insignificant drugs.